9-6. There's two more shots at the clock on this high bank quarter mile. Oh, and he's sideways off of corner number four. That was that was his final lap. Gotcha. Get, gets three. Um, and it was he was he was going for it there at the end. Mondike the second. 11 4 46. We're going to see a lot of zeros on top of our screen as we go through this. It's going to be very, very tight in qualifying. Prunty just 0 0.053 better than mine next time. And the CED Doormasters 46. Good to see this driver from Pewaukee, Tom Jasinski. Took some time off. He was a late model competitor here at the Slinger Super Speedway. Took some time off to get married. <laughs> <laughs> and then and he went modified racing. Brett Wahoyach is his team. Uh, yes, car. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. The Dells came back and um, came back with a super late model. So making the step up here, plans to run for Rookie of the Year at the Slinger Super Speedway in the super late models. Eleven six thirty six, the quickest of his laps so far. So you mentioned eleven six thirty six. If he gets down to a five something, he might be top sixteen. Might not. That's how close we're talking here. Tenths of a second. Yeah, and the eleven six thirty six is his quickest. Here's the driver. That we spoke of earlier. It's not the black number 77. It's the blue 47 of Riley Stenjum. Out of Utica, Wisconsin, a brand new Chase Motorsports ride. Matt Vada, you've got more on Riley's ride. Yeah, second a start with this team. He was one of those cars that was just beyond the bubble mark in practice. Felt like he needed a little bit more here in qualifying, but thinks he can get it done. So keep tabs on this 47. He's going to have to get to 11 440 is where he was in practice. Got to be a little bit faster than that. And he does not go back. Oh, and he's sideways off a of corner number two. He's at an 11 509. So on his final lap, Riley. Oh, he is going for it. And he will not improve his time. He's 11 509. Third quick of the four that have gone. They'd expect these fresh tires to be super fast, right? Well, a lot of these teams have dialed in their setups where they got those fast laps on tires that might be 10 laps, 20 laps, 100 laps old to get their car feeling good for the race. When they pulled on these brand new Hoosier tires, they got to qualify in stickers. There's a little bit difference there, and we're talking about cold temperatures here today. There's not a lot of heat in that racetrack to hold the temps. Brad Keith is a driver with many, many laps around here, former late model champion in the 48. Keith's Marina, the family business. Brad Keith on the track here, trying to make the top 16 in time. That's, all, it's, that's what's locking in to today's 100 lap, Jerry Priest Memorial. 11-3-6-8 for Brad Keith on lap number one. As Brad Keith wraps up his qualifying lap, welcome to our friends on the live look-in. Five cars have qualified now. Five cars have qualified. And we're looking at the defending track champion right now on our live look-in. Thanks for joining us. This is Steve Apel. We're at Slinger Super Speedway on the high banks. Racing for the third straight year to open up the ASA Midwest Tour season. It's a co-sanctioned event with the Slinger Super Speedway Weekly Division Racers. Steve Apel on the track now in the Aceta 51. A six-time track champion matching Conrad Morgan for that honor as uh, one of the all-time greats here at Slinger Super Speedway. The high bank quarter mile. 45 minutes north and west of downtown Milwaukee. Finished second in this event one year ago. Chased his teammate, R.J. Braun, to the checkered flag. So, uh... Cars that are fielded out of the same shop last year in this event finished 1-2. And Steve Apel has gone to the top of the board, 11-3-0-8. So 11-30, 11.30, and uh, we're, already, we're already wondering, we're already wondering, 11.446 for Justin Mondike, is that going to make top 16? That's how close it's going to be. Mondike's third quick right now. This is the driver from Muskego, Wisconsin, a full-time competitor at the Slinger Super Speedway in the Ricardo's Pizza number 55. This is Richie Locke. New car for Rich here in 2024. A new to him ride. This is a former Casey Johnson car and they spent, as you might expect when you have a new ride, spent the last couple of days practicing, just working the bugs out. They had an oil line that broke early on in practice yesterday and it just sprayed oil everywhere under the hood and under the undercarriage of, of that 55 machine. They made a right rear shock change in the last waning moments of the two practice sessions earlier this morning. We had a 30 minute practice session times two and Rich Locke will qualify in 11.570. Seventh of the eight cars that have qualified. 11.570 for Rich Locke, sixth fastest now for Richie. 
He's been here a long time. Raced here in Modifieds after he raced go-karts, where I got to know him, and he's still racing supers at a very high level here at Slinger. It's great to see that family back out. Chosen Valley Farm, number 58, from West Salem, Wisconsin. This is Joe Scholze. Scholze, whoa, hits the apron. Yeah, the wall. He got the wall at the right front there. Hit the apron, and that unsettled the car and shot him up the uh, front straightaway hill. And we should, we should point out that... Yes, it's a high bank quarter mile, but the front straightaway, Jim, and the back straightaway are completely different. The back straightaway where Joe Schulze is there coming off of turn two, much more banking than right here coming off of turn number four. The transition to foot up the outside lane flattens out quickly for the transition for the ramp coming down on the track. And I've been on that ramp and in that transition, I've nosed the car into the front stretch wall here at Slinger <laughs> in a media race. Not proud to say it, but man, it happens in a hurry. If you get a little bit too high, like Schulze did there, even the apron. The apron's flat. This banking is 33 degrees. This is a driver, James Lynch, Palos Park, Illinois. We saw him once before. That was last year at his home track at Grundy County Speedway. You know what he did? Sat on the pole. Finished 10th in that race. He wants to make sure that happens a little bit different here today, whether he wins the pole or not. We do know that in the ASA Midwest Tour, wherever James Lynch qualifies, it may not be where he starts the race because qualifying will determine the qualifying order to a point. The fastest qualifier will have to roll a big old wheel today to see what the inversion, inversion is for the start of this race. Seven plus the spin on the wheel will determine the starting position of our pole sitter. No better than third row. James Lynch currently fifth on the board at an 11.477. Oh, and Jacob Jake Vanaski goes around in the 84 machine. Trying to get heat in the tires. Yeah. It worked. You got them all hot. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> Jake's been around a long time. Raced actually last year's Slinger, Slinger Super Speedway. He's been racing here, but last year he dedicated a lot of his time and effort to Rockford Speedway in its final season. They went 76 years before the Deary family decided to no longer host weekly racing there. They sold the property, and that's where Jake Winowski spent a lot of his time a lot of his time a year ago. And it's good to see him here in a super late. He only raced here a couple times last year, 21st in points for Winowski in 2023 in the Slinger standings. It is cool, a little on the cooler side, but we're at about 50 degrees, which is uh, 50 and sunny, which is much warmer than it was one year ago for this event. So if anybody was working off of those notes from last year, any of these drivers and teams, it's uh, it's a bit different here in 2024. But Dean, you were here yesterday. Yeah. It was just like a year ago, wasn't it? Oh, my God. 39 degrees and blustery. And blessed windy yep. and gray and overcast and... Yeah, yesterday was a, a practice day, open practice day, that many of these teams, not all, but many of these teams took advantage of. Jake Vanoski really has his hands full there in that 84 machine. Just so you can see he's struggling for grip. His final qualifying lap will move him up to ninth at an 11.935. Here's the, uh, whoa, that is a throwback paint scheme on this 89. Jim? Three-time track champion at Slinger Super Speedway. Still racing during late models and here at Slinger Speedways on Sunday nights. And that Pontiac knows number 89 is Brad Miller out of Random Lake, Wisconsin. The Barker Motor Sports entry. Yes, this is a, uh, Bradley's been racing here at Slinger for a long time. This is a throwback to 20 years ago, the scheme. I like this. That is, a, that is a very pretty, pretty blue. And Kevin Barker, his car owner, uh, has a detail shop. He details automobiles, cars, street cars. So you know that anytime this 89 hits the track, it is going to be clean and sharp. And it is indeed. Bradley raced last night on the dirt. The Beaver Dam Raceway. Dirt Kings Tour. Yep. Dirt Late Models, a regional series that sometimes plays with the other national series and they come through the area. Sixth quick for Brad Miller, 11.500. Great story here. Jonathan Schaefer making his Super Late Model Series debut in a car that Casey Johnson is fielding. The three-time ASA Midwest Tour champion has said, you know what, I need to work on this driver. Barrett Palimas last year raced with Casey in the Midwest Tour, finished fifth in the point standings after never racing a Super Late in the Midwest. This is car number 91. The driver's name is Jonathan Schaefer out of Ashland, Ohio, 18 years of age. With Casey Johnson working with his dad and his team to present this car full time in ASA Midwest Tour competition. First time that he has been behind the wheel of a super late model. 
Had a couple of races in the ARCA series, the yep. ARCA Menard series. Three truck races last year in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series as well. Yep, but first time ever in a super late model. Driver from Ohio, and he's third quick. 11.387, a 387. So Jonathan Schaefer has never seen Slinger Super Speedway before, has never been in a super late model before, and he gave it a good qualifying run. The defending Slinger Nationals champion is also a five-time ASA Midwest Tour champion on the track. The familiar iRacing hood means one thing. Ty Majeski's here. He's here to win another one at Slinger Super Speedway. Soda Sense, incredible bank, also along for the ride here on this 91 machine. This is what well, he got down on the apron as well. This is the car that Ty drove to that last Slinger Nationals victory. So he knows how to get it done here. This car knows its way to victory lane at Slinger. It's a special event they've held here for over 40 years. And Ty Majeski cuts the corner here at turn three and four like nobody's business. And Ty Majeski is going to look to be one of the favorites here today. Can he do it in qualifying to start the day right? Second quick. Steve Apel has a 3.08. Ty Majeski goes in 11.323. Us versus them. Apel, the track champion. Ty Majeski, the traveling Midwest Tour star. 1-2 in qualifying right now. Here's the driver in the Morris. Number 92, P.D. Paterka entry. The crew's been busy. The, de the defending race winner, R.J. Braun. Matt Body, what do you have? 92. Yeah, they did have issues in practice. That second session, R.J. Braun blew the rear end housing out of this thing. They have been frantically putting this thing back together to get it back in line, in time, is impressive in its own right. And his teammates, he may pull a quick time right now. We'll see. R.J. to third. Very impressive considering the work they're doing on that car. They're pitted on the back pits way up on top. A lot of work being done. This car is fielded out of April's shop now for the second consecutive year. And the 92 of R.J. Braun goes the third fastest, 11.354, 11.354 for R.J. Braun. Former track champion of a year ago removed and race winner of a year ago here to defend it. So third quick, teammates first and third, brings out the wabam zero, the Italian nightmare of Ryan Stefano. <laughs> Such a pleasant kid and his family. They're working hard oh at, this, at this business. Well, BAM is a very, very nice cleaning product. It does a lot of things on vehicles, a lot of things on detail work, a lot of things that you can apply to your home. They've got great cleaners. Um, the Wabam product, Wabam.com, is what their family has built from zero, and they show it off and shine it up nicely. They're also uh, sponsoring cars like Stephen Nassi on a national level. This is Ryan Stefano. He and his dad, Cool Joe, have made this work, and he's also been racing here for a long time. 2013 Slinger late model champ, Ryan Stefano now qualifies. Dean, where'd he end up? Sixth quick. His best lap in 11.391. So sixth quick, good qualifying effort for Stefano. We are going to take 16 through time, Jim, and this is our 16th qualifier. Greg Borchert took a whole year off last year from the Midwest Tour. His last race with the series was Oktoberfest 2022. This is Greg Borchert out of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Eight career. ASA Midwest Tour starts to his credit. He also raced in the Joe Shear Classic back in 2022 and finished 22nd in that race. Again, if you're watching us on the live look-in, welcome. This is the opening event for the ASA Midwest Tour 2024, the Jerry Prishkin Memorial. And it is promising to be a great afternoon, a great field of cars for the ASA Midwest Tour. We're going to give you this live look-in if you want to watch the rest of the program. There's undercards, there's late models, there's Bs, and then there's figure eights. Go to tracktv.com, tracktv.com. Get yourself signed up. Borchard ends up 10th. Very nice run for him. And Good here ball. is a former Slinger Speedway champion. In the number four, Luke Fenhouse. The direct exterior is number four. He's back at Slinger. He's back in the ASA Midwest Tour. Great to have Luke here. Of course, he won this event two years ago. Jim said he was a former track champion here at Slinger Super Speedway in weekly competition. Also a former um, Slinger Nationals champion. And On he goes the to the top of the board. There he goes, 11 2 9 one. Ow, a two. Third lap, or I should say that was the second lap, was a little bit slower. It was a 3.32. One more lap for Luke Fenhaus. Such an impressive run for this young driver who just turned 20 years of age. A little bit quicker, a 289, 11.289. He's going to have a Craftsman Truck Series ride in his future in about a month and a half at Gateway. 
Racing as a teammate to Ty Majeski, both out of the central Wisconsin area. Ty now living in Nina, Wisconsin. Luke has now moved back to his home area in Wausau. This is the number six of Owen Giles. Owen Giles in the car number six out of Elk, New, Elko, Newmarket, Minnesota. He races at the 3 8 mile Elko Speedway quite often, as you could tell. As you'd imagine, sixth in points last year in the late models. He's hoping to make the show. He's been really kind of fun to watch and follow on socials, saying, hey, man, I just want to be here. I want to make the show if I can. I'm your guy that's going to be one to watch in the semi. Let's see if Owen Giles can put it in the show with a great qualifying effort. A little bit of a bobble on that lap. And a little wide up for four in this one. Well, he's 14th so far on the grid, 11.540, 11.540. So in the show right now, but by the hairy hair on his chinny chin chin. Here is the 80. I was a little concerned about him. He was a fast qualifier one year ago in this event. Ryan Farrell, a little bit out of order. Had some issues with some engine issues. They were reporting uh, a little bit of smoke out of the rear tailpipe, a little bit of uh, misfire earlier today. That car is right on where it needs to be. Ryan Farrell, car number 80, the Adams towing. Oak Creek Automotive sponsor, number 80. Goes 12th quick. Again, he was a fast qualifier in this event one year ago. Ended his day early. That's the thing that's so tough about the ASA Midwest Tour. I love it as a fan. I love it that the fast qualifier does not start on the pole. There is an invert. Ryan Farrell probably wasn't a big fan of the invert last year, but Ryan Farrell goes 10th quick. So again, the fast qualifier will draw a uh, spin a wheel. So seven plus the number on the wheel, so no better than fourth row inside, will, or fourth row outside, really. Could be a zero on the, on the wheel, right? Seven could be the invert. We'll invert at least the top seven in qualifying. And here is the number seven, John oh. DeAngelis Jr. Johnny D, he's got a fast car no matter where he goes. He's been really fast. He should have won the Gendry Auto Group 250 last August. Had a dominant car in that premier race for the ASA Midwest Tour. Johnny D, back at his home track, spent a lot of time here since about 2010 in various cars and now racing on select occasions here in the Midwest Tour. And John DeAngelis Jr. second quick, 11-3-0-4. He has one more lap here. He looks smooth. Does the seven machine. Does he have anything for Luke Fenhouse? He does not. Goes to 320. So his official will be an 11.304 second quick for Johnny D. Owen Giles now on the bubble in car number six. We talked about him trying to make the show. 11.691 is his 11.540. Uh, 11.540 is his best lap of the three. So we'll keep an eye on that bubble time. Top 16 locked in. We have two last chance qualifiers to determine the remainder of the 37 cars to qualify in for the show. The Progress Manufacturing, Reed Racing, Forty Bank, Cousins Sub, number seven, of Mitch Haver. Mitch Haver, here's a driver who uh, ran in the sportsman division here at a weekly basis, ran in the late model division here at Slinger on a weekly basis, now stretching his legs a little bit in the super late model do division, doing some traveling. Yep, had Travis Dasso with him the entire time he was at New Smyrna Speedway's uh, World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing in February. Getting some get some runs here in. Good to see him in in the field. Quick is Mitch, an 11.450. So in on time as of now, some good quality cars to go. Here's a former ASA Midwest Tour Rookie of the Year. Took some time off. We'd usually see him about once or twice a year, and it was usually at Oktoberfest. <laughs> Yeah, Billy Bone likes to race in his home state of Minnesota or in La Crosse area. Which 2018, is he ran full year. Yep, yep. Got rookie of the year that year, top 10 in points. Billy Moan in the eighth. Up to 13th. Billy's in the show for now. Good job by him. I see the AM Apex Motorsports logo on there. That's Travis Dasso helping him out as well. And that bumps Riley Stengem. Riley Stengem, 17th quick. Brad Miller now on the bubble. Billy Moan sits 13th. One final qualifying lap to go. Give him a little more cushion if he can. On the gas pedal. He down gets through. a little. Gets tenth. a little bit more cushion. Yep. Tenth. Up, up yep. to tenth. Eleven four one nine. Man, we're talking whiskers here. We're talking slivers. And we're talking about a NASCAR Cup Series driver returning to his home state of Wisconsin to race in a super late model since he made his NASCAR Cup Series debut at Phoenix. And Las Vegas, it's Derek Krause out of Stratford, Wisconsin. He's been on the podium here at the Slinger Super Speedway in some big events. Has yet to crack through with a big win here at the High Bank Slinger Super Speedway, though. Derek Krause, they've been struggling with uh, water pump issues all weekend, clutch issues all weekend. For their sake, they hope that they have those behind them. 
Derek Krause in the nine machine in his 10th quick. Just 23 years of age. He's been racing at this level for the last nine years in super late models. He's made the last consecutive eight snowball derbies. And Derek Krause and his family team trying to get in the show. Goes at the top of the board. 11 280. Derek Krause rips it off. Wow, what a great run by Derek Krause. All those issues, forget about it. Matt Vadi, he's on the pole right now. Yeah, you were talking about guys that were struggling earlier today. RJ Braun with the transmission and rear end issues. Derek Krause, they have been going to work all afternoon. They only got a handful of laps in the first practice session with a water pump break it. They had to switch clutches right before qualifying, and boy, it paid off. He's on the top of the board right now. Keep an eye on this driver. 15th quick on lap number one. He can flat out get it done. He's a former Slinger Super Speedway track champion. This is Alex Prunty. Alex Prunty up to fifth. One more lap for the Paul Riley sponsored number 11 driver. Did not practice yesterday. Just took a few laps this morning. He was quick hard. and now he goes to the top of the board. <laughs> Alex Prunty to the top of the board. Now we're down to 11.205. Wow. Will Nick Egan get in the 11.2s? That is a big gap. That's the biggest gap we've seen all day. A 205 is fast. Derek Krause went at 280. Yeah. That's, that's on the most other side places, of the decimal point on most, the right side. <laughs> most places that would be, no, nah, not that close. Here at Slinger, that is a blink of an eye. Nick Egan, next generation racer. His dad, Mike, raced on the dirt and now on this pavement oval for a long time. Nick Egan has raced in the uh, CRA's, uh, the JEG CRA All-Star Series, finished second in points there, and won Rookie of the Year a couple years ago. Kind of home turf for him. He came here with the Midwest Truck Series, raced here in late models. Now in a super late, Nick Egan goes 16th. He's inside the bubble. 11.460 right now for Egan out of Slinger, Wisconsin, in the current electric 13. Nick Egan won a track championship here in the Thunderstock Division. 12th quick for Nick. They were struggling yesterday in practice, looking for some more speed. Let's see if that's good enough to get him an automatic pass into the 100 lapper. Car will see every race this year. On the ASA Midwest Tour, it's Cody King, 17 years of age in this number 14. A lot of high, a lot of ties in history here. He's got autism awareness on the car, the beautiful painted number with the puzzle pieces signifying the autism cause. And it's good to see Cody King here racing. He's done a lot of different kind of racing. Good to see Cody King, a 17-year-old of Clear Lake, Iowa making his run here after just one start last year at his home track in Cedar Rapids in the series. This is under the watchful eye of Joe Wood and the folks at Pathfinder Chassis. Coltman Farms racing 14, goes 14. He's in. Wow, by a little bit. Bumps Mitch Haver, bumps James Lynch, Ryan Farrell now on the bubble. Good job by Cody King and that team. We were here yesterday practicing. Again, it was an optional practice for a lot of di drivers and teams. They took full advantage of it. Here is your reigning champion in the ASA Midwest Tour, tour the Maristem DeKalb Quick Trip, number 15, Gabe Summers. Out of, out of uh, Plover, Wisconsin. Great to see Gabe Summers back to defend his championship. He started the year this year in February at the New Smyrna Speedway, World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing, where he's done it the last couple of years. A little head start on things on, the, on that new tire specifically. 24th quick. Oh what do my. you have, Matt oh Body? Wow. Let's see what he does here. The number 15 of Gabe Summers continues on. We're going to finish up this lap. We'll get down to Matt Body at the checkered flag at the number 15. We've got it going on here. We're trying to get scoring caught up with you. Gabe, Gabe Summers, Summers, 12th. 12th quick. In the show. That's a good improvement. Let's now check in with Matt Body. And 12th currently for Gabe Summers. And they were not really putting a lot of effort into qualifying today, knowing that they had the provisional to fall back on. The driver that does have a lot to gain here, Grant Griesbach, was worried about qualifying. He was fourth quickest in the first practice session and said, I've never been on stickers before. Let's see how this goes. And that's Grant Griesbach on the racetrack right now. He's got to beat that time to get locked in at 16th. 11.446. And Matt brings up an interesting point. Grant Griesbach competes quite often here in the Sunday night competition at Slinger Super Speedway. At Slinger on Sunday night, they qualify on scuff tires. Here in the ASA Midwest Tour, we qualify on sticker tires. So that is something. Not only is it a new tire, but for a guy like Grant Griesbach, it is a, uh, a new ball game. Well, he adapted quickly, did the young college student sixth quick. Nice job by Grant. That knocks out 
Justin Mondike, the driver finished second in points a year ago. Here comes the second uh, driver that we see in the Kowicki Driver Development Program. Colors, the number 17 of Max Kaler out of Caledonia, Illinois. Former champion of the national uh, short track championships at his home track, Rockford Speedway. Max is now focused forward on super late model racing and back here in the ASA Midwest Tour for Max Kaler. He's got 17 starts to this point in the division. He's finished third three times last season in the six attempts in the ASA Midwest Tour. And he goes all the way up the board to ninth. Quick does Max Kaler. Max at an 11, 359. Bumps Cody King. Matt, or I should say a Max Kaler, comfortably in the show. Ninth quick. Great to see that effort. Partially due to, in fact, the man that the shocks and springs technology for that team. Former ASA Midwest Tour champion Andrew Morrissey here today helping with Max Kaler's efforts. Here's another Kowicki driver development entrant in 2024. Also carried the Kowicki colors last year. This is the 23 machine of Levon Vandergeese. Levon Vandergeese, 20 year old from Merrill, Wisconsin. Birthday was just a couple of days ago and he was uh, in his dorm room when we talked to him on Midwest Tour Talk. We hope you got a chance to see that on our socials and on tracktv.com this week. Taking some time with the family this weekend. Getting it dialed in. He was here yesterday in practice in a big way. Second quick for Levon. Great lap on lap number two. He actually tied Alex Prunty at an 11-2-0-5. <laughs> wow. So now we're talking about tie for the fastest car here. <laughs> Not the second fastest in practice. My goodness. <laughs> Willie Nelson on the track of the number 25. Willie Nelson out of Sullen Mills, Illinois. Finished eighth in points at Rockford Speedway, the now shuttered quarter mile. About an hour south uh, along the state line of Wisconsin and Illinois. Been racing at Rockford Weekly since 2019. Yeah. We'll see who we'll see who comes down the racetrack to see who, if indeed the fastest qualifier. It's a tie. We'll have to see what the rule breaker is. Yeah, if it goes back to points, yeah. it'll be Levon. If it goes to who qualified first. It'll be Alex. Yep. And that number draw comes to play. Carter in that back I, 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 I didn't read that far in the rule book. It's about 17 pages <laughs> in. I think we got the 16, I'm guessing. <laughs> Willie Nelson on the track, trying to make it in the top 16. Won't do it. He's 22nd fastest, 11 4 7 1. 11 4 7 1 with the IBEW 494. Sponsorship on the quarter panel of his number 25. Trying to make his debut here in the ASA Midwest Tour. By my unofficial count, there was 35 cars back in the pit area. We have qualified. This will be the 32nd driver to qualify. This is Braden Berge. Braden Berge in the number 28 machine. Driver from Elkhorn, Wisconsin. A regular at Dell's Raceway Park. He raced with his Super Late Model Championship last year there. Had a chance to talk to Braden and his younger brother Tanner, who's also racing an outlaw late model with great success. Won the championship at Dell's Raceway Park. So the racing family continues. This is Braden Berge in car number 28, trying to make his debut in the ASA Midwest Tour by qualifying top 16. Nice and straight off the corner pass. number four. He's 19th quick. This is his final lap. In and out, Braden. What do you got? Oh, he's in. 12th quick. Wow. Good for him. That, that team. bumps Nick Egan and puts the reigning champion on the bubble. Gabe Summers on the bubble, and here comes a driver that did a lot of good things here last year in a late model, Jesse Bernhagen, the 2023 Slinger late model champion. Stepping it up to the super late model division. Matt Vadi, what do you have on Jesse Bernhagen? Well, our broadcast partner, Jesse Bernhagen, on track in his super late model debut here at Slinger. His goals this afternoon are to make the race, get himself inside the top 16. Right now, it looks like he just made it. It's just outside. Yeah, Jesse did some work with us at Oktoberfest last year. He was up in the booth. And Jesse Bernhagen on his second lap goes to fourth. What? He's in. He went from 20th to fourth in the stopwatch. Yes, he did. My goodness. 11.287. Jesse Bernhagen in to the Jerry Prishkin Memorial. Miracle on the High Banks 100. It's a family operation for the Bernhagens, and it's a big deal to make his second start in the ASA Midwest Tour. It will happen here today at Slinger Super Speedway. He bumped Gabe Summers, puts Dennis Prunty on the bubble. This is the number 30 of Joe Valento. I saw Joe at, he's 19 years of age now. I saw Joe Valento four years ago racing the Midwest Truck Series. He should have won the race at the Milwaukee Mile after setting fast time. That honor went to Levon Vandergeest, who became the youngest ever winner at that storied racetrack here in Wisconsin. 
Joe Valento. We hope to see more of him this season, right, Dean? Yeah, we're going to see him. Uh, the plan is to see him full-time on the ASA Midwest Tour. Made his debut on the tour last year at Hawkeye Down Speedway. Has Travis Dassau signed up to be the crew chief for the entire season. Andy Monday, his spotter. So he's got a lot of veterans behind him and in his corner to uh, keep him on the straight and narrow there. Joe Valento... I'm looking up, Dean. Are you looking down? I'm looking up. I don't up. think he's in top 16. Can't quite tell. We'll move on here, talking about the next driver, one of the hottest drivers on the planet. He just won a big race, 100 lapper last Sunday. This is 15-year-old Ty Fredrickson, the third of the Kowicki Driver Development Drivers. In the Herman's Landscaping, number 36, his dad, Dan, is a multi-time ASA Midwest Tour champion. But here comes the next generation, Ty Fredrickson, into turn three. Let's check in with Matt Body. And fresh off that big win last weekend, Ty making his first start here at Slinger with the same goal as Bernd Hagen. Just get this thing in the show. He's got to get over a 391 to get in there now. And I do believe he just got in. He got in 15th. So he's in right now, 15th. Ryan DeStefano has been bumped. Dennis Prunty has been bumped. Jonathan Schaefer is on the bubble. Now that was the last car. My, oh my! Nothing like a flair for the dramatic young tie. Well, Ty Majeski, <laughs> uh, Ty Majeski is the driver we've all been talking about. There's a, a new tie in the Wisconsin scene. The Minnesotan Ty Fredrickson is in the show, and it's important to note who is not qualified top 16. Again, they may be eligible for provisionals, but we'll continue our stream here, and you'll see a last chance race. Two of them, as a matter of fact, to determine the remainder of our starting field. In those last chance races, will be. If all things go square, Ryan DeStefano, Dennis Prunty, these are cars that did not qualify top 16. Gabe Summers, the defending series champion, Nick Egan, Billy Moan, Cody King, Justin Mondike, Ryan Farrell, Mitchell Haber. They're the first uh, nine cars that have not uh, transferred on through. Willie Nelson, James Lynch, Greg Borchardt, they're all in the, uh, They're all eligible to make it, but they have to race through the last chance race. Riley Stengem, Owen Giles. Brad Miller, too. Rich Locke. Yeah, a lot of good cars are going to be racing their way in to the starting field for today's 100 lapper. The drivers that are in, Alex Prunty, Levon Vandergeest, Derek Krause, Jesse Bernhagen, Luke Fenhouse, that's the top five, John DeAngelis Jr., Steve Apel, Grant Griesbach, Ty Majeski, ninth, RJ Braun, Joe Valento, we couldn't find him on the grid. He was up. He was going up, Jim, up the chart. 11th for Valento. Max Kaler will race. Brad Keith, Braden Berge, Ty Fredrickson and Jonathan Schaefer. If you're watching on the live look-in, those are the 16 that we know are going to be in the 100 lapper. We're going to add some more through the last chance qualifiers. We're going to add some more via the provisional route. Any way you cut it, that is a good field. And we have other divisions to show you here on the stream. It's all part of our action. You need at some point, we're going to sign things over to where you need to be in the subscription mode. So I want to remind you again, log on to tracktv.com. Subscribe. It's a monthly subscription. You'll get every race the last three years of the Midwest Tour. You'll get every race this year going forward. You can watch it live or on demand. If you've got your schedule already set for where you're going camping and going racing this year, following the Midwest Tour or the ASA Stars National Tour, you're going to the Double Dipper in Mobile and Pensacola in the ASA Southern Super Series next weekend. That's all part of the package on tracktv.com. You can watch it anytime you'd like. If you can't catch it live, we'd love to see you here in person at the racetrack. But soon enough, we're going to be turning things off the free side, and we'll go to our subscriber base and watch live or on demand. We want you to log on now to tracktv.com. So there's divisions here. We call them B's and Super B's and late models in addition to the ASA Midwest Tour and Slinger Super Speedway Super Late Model. So Super Late Model qualifying has just concluded if you're just joining us. Again, we'll be stepping away momentarily from our live uh, look-in. So we want you to go to tracktv.com and sign up to subscribe. If you're a MidwestTour.tv subscriber, you get all of it as well. You get all the Track TV programming as well as the MidwestTour.tv that you've enjoyed the last couple of years TrackTV.com, the official live home of all ASA-branded racing across the country. 
The ASA CRA Super Series is kicking in their season very soon. Uh, they race primarily in Indiana, Ohio. That series is going to be also hosting a co-sanctioned event called the Redbud 400 in July at a high bank quarter mile track in Anderson, Indiana. Looking forward to seeing a bunch of racing here on tracktv.com. We want you to be part of it. Subscribe now. We're going to end our live look in here shortly. And we'll go to tracktv.com for the remainder of our day for our subscribers. Let us now check in with Matt Vadi. Matt, who you got? A happy guy or a sad guy? Uh, we about. got a pretty happy guy down here, rookie Jonathan Schaefer. First time at Slinger. You're in the show. Congratulations. How do you feel? Yes, sir. Thank you. You know, uh, Casey Johnson never gave me a great car. Actually, my first race in a super late model as well. So, uh, you know, happy to be locked in. I uh, feel like the track did pick up a little bit towards the end there. Um, but, you know, I feel like we have a really good race pace. I'm just happy to qualify in, and, you know, we'll start picking cars off in the race. All right. Your first experience here at Slinger, dropping down into that bowl. You ready to go 100 laps this afternoon? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, Casey Johnson, like I said, and the crew gave me a great car, and, you know, it's just up to me to drive it now. All right, best of luck. Jonathan Schaefer, first career super late model start, first visit to Slinger, checking the boxes. He's in the feature. Pretty impressive young man. He made three NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series starts last year. That was one patch on the right shoulder. The Menards patch on the left shoulder, yeah, he raced in the Arkham Menard Series as well. Making the effort, saying, I need to get really good at what I want to do. I think Casey Johnson's my guy. We're going racing with him this year. Jim, I don't think we can emphasize how big that is. You and I have both been coming to the Slinger Super Speedway for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and this historically has favored the driver. This track yeah. has favored the driver who has been racing here for years. <laughs> Here's a kid who is first time in a super late model, his first time at Slinger, and he puts it in the show and qualified. Yeah, it's amazing. That Absolutely is Absolutely amazing. Speaking of drivers that have made themselves maybe a little more national attention, we just caught a glimpse of a Slinger B on the racetrack. It was Carter Stark in that number 92. He's the same Carter Stark that won in the Voris Compact Touring Series last year. He and his dad, Kyle, have really done nice things and raced across the country in these four-cylinder cars. So they got their start. The Stark family started here. Now Carter Stark's racing. That young man's also got a late model at his disposal, and we also know that there's going to be some more racing for Kyle Stark who's now racing in the Badger Midgets on dirt with Harlan Kittleson and the gang. That's Kyle's, that's Kyle's that's, boy, Carter Stark. And he's going to run, uh, you mentioned the late model. He's yeah. going to run the late model at Jefferson Speedway on oh. occasions. And we will be at Jefferson Speedway the Saturday night of Memorial Day weekend. You can catch all the action right here on tracktv.com. The ASA Midwest Tour will be at Jefferson. Pretty cool to know that we've got a lot of re great racetracks on the schedule featuring these stars. The ASA Midwest Tour, one driver that Matt Vod is with is trying to make his 37th start in the ASA Midwest Tour. Matt, how's it going for that driver? Well, we went from one happy driver to one that's still scratching his head a little bit. Uh, Ryan Farrell was quick time in this event a year ago. He started off pretty good last week, but engine gremlins are back with the 80 machine. What's going on? Yeah, we had some rocker arm issues here uh, Put us out of practice and we kind of got it going there at the end got some laps but uh just missed it in qualifying now it's a handling issue so cars is not rotating enough and uh, we're gonna have to do some work here in a hurry because we got to pass about six cars to get in this thing so not gonna be easy yeah you're gonna have to get top two in this one 15 laps it's a real short sprint race the aggression level goes up to get there how are you gonna get there well, I, I don't know. The aggression level will probably go up, but we're all dumb for it because we probably don't have a shot to win the race anyway. So I don't know why everybody turns their brain off for, for just getting in the show. But if you're smart, you just do what you can, and uh, and we'll just see how it pans out. If the car is good enough to get there, we'll get there. I don't need to bounce off everybody doing it. So. All right. Well, we'll see. He's going to have 15 laps to get there. Ryan Farrell, one of those drivers that's going to have to get in the top two of those last chance races. Two last chance races, 15 laps each, and we are now telling you now, for the first time, only the top two of each of those races yep. transfer in. Yep. It was uh, that was a discussion at so the driver's brains on, meeting. Brains off. Yeah, Farrell's, yeah. About, Farrell's about to find out if his brain is hooked in with what his uh, crew chief Justin King can get that car to handle better. With. Todd Thielen, owner at the Slinger Super Speedway, Greg McCarns, uh, co-promoting this event. They put their heads together at the drivers' meeting and said, "You know what? We have a big field of cars. How about we split that last chance race up into two last chance races instead of just the one?" It had been a 30-lap take the top four. Yep. I like the idea that you can race your way in with a few less cars to worry about, but it's still a, a stacked field. We mentioned the names of the drivers not in the show. This is, again, the qualifying session for the Super Bs. We had an incident with this number 35 early in their first run. 25, excuse me, Regals. Let's follow up, though, on Ryan Farrell. Yeah. He's on the outside 
looking in. Yep. He has to run the last chance race. Mired pretty deep in the last chance race. That driver, that car, was fast time in this event one year ago. Yeah. What have you done lately? Like as in <laughs> this morning. <laughs> history, history does not matter. <sighs> oh, we got a couple 25s on the track. Hope I got the number right and the name right. This that's is... just that just has to be maddening. It is, and that's you think part, you, that's you part think, of the chase, really. You think you have it dialed in? Oh, we're good. That's Regal's on the screen, so Bauer is the car that had the issue. And I'm telling you that there's something about that team. I was at that race last weekend at the uh, Dells Raceway Park, where we're going on Labor Day weekend for the Jim Sauter Classic. It's going to pay 15 grand to win that one. But all the super late model stars that had their cars ready to go in Wisconsin were there. And Ryan Farrell didn't qualify in that show either. He had to start way in the back. And wouldn't you know it, he took the lead with a uh, 100 lap on a third mile and uh, finished second to Ty Fredrickson in that race. So if they have something to figure out, they've got last week's notes to say, you know what, different racetrack, but we know we have confidence in our team. We can pass cars. We just need to get the show to show what we have. This is the final division of qualifying here this afternoon. This is the Bs, the Super Bs, the faster of the four-cylinder The Tactus divisions. family has pretty much dominated this division. Look at that. He's hiking the left rear. Three <laughs> wheels on the track has less uh, friction than four. <laughs> left rear in the air for Marty Takis. Oh, goodness gracious. Yep. So to Ryan Farrell's point, though, uh, we do have a lot of great competition and a lot of great racing coming up. Those two last chance qualifiers for the ASA Midwest Tour should be barn burners indeed. And we are getting word, Jim. Yes. From race control. What is the answer? Well, we had, we if have... you remember, we had two drivers yeah. tie atop the leaderboard for ASA Midwest Tour qualifying. Okay. Alex Prunty and Levon Vandergeek tied. Exact same time. Exact same time. Yep. And we questioned, we wondered, does it go to the guy who had higher points last year? Or does it go to the guy who set that time first? And our answer is the driver who set it first which is Alex Prunty. So Prunty got to go first in the order of qualifying, and that was the tie-breaking rule. Amazingly enough, we're at 11 5 and there's two cars that qualified fastest among this entire stacked field. Yeah. Welcome to Midwestern Racing. <laughs> ASA Midwest Tour, super late model racing in Wisconsin. We're a little spoiled here, but the Midwest Tour, once again, showing up and showing out with the stars from the Slinger Super Speedway in the season opener. You know, when you if you're an outsider, perhaps you're watching this on our live look in from uh, Utah, let's just say, hypothetically. Go ahead, you could say that. And you look at this track and you're like, wait a minute, that's really high banked and it's only a quarter mile and you're gonna run super late models there? Are you crazy? Yep, they do it. They run side by side and they don't touch. It's one of the better racetracks of this size that I've been to where that, that happens. We're not talking about a lane and a quarter. We're not talking about a single lane racetrack. You got to bump no. and nudge and grind down somebody. It's two full lanes. And it could be a 15 lap chase to get around somebody. They race clean here. They're not about a bunch of bump and run guys. They're not going to spin you out because you, you had a bad day. Yeah. And ASA Midwest Tour has been steadfast. Now for the 15th year of the series, if you're involved, you're going to the back. So if you dial somebody and, they, and race control deems that you've been involved in the incident, you're going to the tail. You're not going to get that advantage of just bumping them with no recourse. I like that idea. In weekly competition in many tracks here in the Upper West Midwest, they have what's called the tap-out rule. If you do make contact with somebody and you say, ah, you know what, my bad, that was on me, you can go to the start-finish line, tap out. He has to go to the back, but the guy that got spun out can get his position back. Not here in the ASA Midwest Tour. To your point, if you're involved yep. in an incident, you're both going to the back. Yep, yep. That's some pretty sporty looking race cars here. They've been spending a lot of time spit shining this one here. Well, this, you know, it is the first race of the season. Best looking cars of the year right here. <laughs> Best time to get in the parade, right? That's Going right. Racetrack. July 4th, they might not look so nice oh, in the back of the trailer. This is, this is Davey Pennell in the 86. So Live if you love this in. racing, if you love this kind of racing, you're in the right place. Yep. But if you're not here as a subscriber to MidwestTour.tv or TrackTV.com, thank you for joining us. You know what that means, Dean? Because the live look-in is closed. Yep. We're heading out. We're going to end the live look-in. Thank you. We we'll encourage you to watch us live or on demand today and every ASA Midwest Tour race and every ASA sanctioned branded race live on TrackTV.com. That's where you need to head to right now and subscribe. We'll see you there.